Hi, this is John from the Garmin Marine team, and today we want to show you some of the advanced settings on your Echo Series fish finders. Garmin didn't just redesign our fish finders, we gutted them and started from scratch, asking fishermen what they really wanted on board their boat. What we came up with is the Echo Series, the best possible combination of features, power, and performance for your money. The Echo Series is designed to be easy to use and give you a great sonar image right out of the box, but there are some advanced settings in the setup menu that you may want to adjust to suit your personal use. We'll show you some of these settings and help you get the Echo Series customized to work best for you. So let's get into the advanced settings by hitting the menu button, toggling down to the setup option, and hitting enter. The first item on the setup menu is alarms. You can ask the Echo Series to alert you to shallow water, so you know if the water is getting too skinny for you, deep water, so you know if you're getting into water too deep for your preference that day, battery, to alert you if the battery voltage drops below your set limit, fish, to alert you when it detects a fish target below the boat, water temp, to alert you if the water temperature varies more than two degrees from the temperature that you set, and drift, to alert you when the water depth changes in your location by more than the specified amount. The next option under setup is sonar setup. This is where you can really change the look and the feel of the sonar image. First off, you can change the frequency of the transducer from 200 kilohertz to 77 kilohertz and back again, if your Echo Series has dual frequency capabilities. Remember that 200 kilohertz is better for shallow water, while 77 kilohertz has a wider beam angle and is excellent for searching for fish and structure. You can also go into scroll speed and choose a higher scroll speed to see more detail, especially while moving or trolling, or use a slower scroll speed to keep the sonar images on screen longer. The fish symbols option prompts the echo display to draw suspected fish targets as little fish on screen. You can even show the depth reading for that fish and show the sonar return or arch at the same time. The noise reject option allows you to minimize the appearance of weak sonar returns, eliminating them from the sonar display. Be careful here, as you may also eliminate small bait fish targets or thermoclines. The surface noise option allows you to get rid of all the clutter and turbulence at the surface that results from waves or prop wash. The color scheme option allows you to choose between a white background with yellow targets and a blue background with red targets. This is just personal preference. Try them both out and see which one works best for you. The last option under sonar setup is split size. This would apply when you choose the split zoom or split frequency screens. The normal setting splits the screen 50-50, while the large setting creates one large and one small window. The sonar numbers option allows you to change the size and quantity of information that shows on screen here. Hit menu, setup, and sonar numbers. You can choose from small, medium, and large fonts, as well as turn on or off additional information such as water temp, battery voltage, water speed, and the odometer. The system option allows you to make system-wide changes to your display, including changing the language displayed, changing the unit from day colors to the more subdued night colors, changing the backlight levels, turning the beeper on or off, and choosing the auto power option. With auto power off, you have to manually press the power button to turn the unit on. With the auto power on, as soon as the unit senses 12 volt power, it will automatically come on. One last option we wanted to show you is the calibration option. Under calibration, you can customize your depth and temp readouts to compensate for local conditions. The keel offset allows you to account for the difference in depth between your transducer and your prop. Let's say your transducer is here and your prop is down here. The depth finder will show a depth, let's say six feet. But in reality, since your prop is two feet lower than your transducer, you only have four feet of water under your prop. You can put in a keel offset so the unit will read four feet and you will know exactly how much water is under the prop. You can also manually correct the readout of your water temp sensor and your water speed sensor if you have them connected by going into this menu. And one last thing, if you're using the odometer setting to track how far you've gone, you can reset it here. So that's it on the advanced settings for the Echo Series. 
You should now be familiar with just about every setting on the Echo Series products and be able to customize the view and the performance to suit your needs. If you have any more questions about the Echo Series, go to garmin.com forward slash marine or ask any one of our authorized installing dealers. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water.